when you don't have symptoms. So all these things cause some obsessions or obtrusions. What about you? What did you do to cause your obtrusions this week? I know what the chiropractors did. <clears throat> I've seen, I used to be one. First of all, they lift their patients off the table. Oh, I'm back. Well, some of them do a, a kind of a forceful adjustment. <clears throat> and that whiplash produces an intrusion in them. Certainly every person who's done any sport of any kind has intrusions. All activities is called, you know, the, I think the thing that causes most intrusions is stress. You ever see an actor showing stress? You know, they have a tough time, they're stressful. The first thing they do automatically is their hand goes to the back of their neck. Oh, terrible. Stress causes obtrusions. And I was told today that the uh, financial si situation here in Ireland is tough. Well, that stress from toughness of the financial situation makes things great for the spinologists. You, you spinologists have a heck of a time coming to you now. In times of stress, you're nearly more than ever. But even without stress, Everyday living causes obtrusions. Every single person benefits from having his spine open. The fact is, everybody has obtrusions, and everybody will be better off if they got rid of the obtrusions. No, no matter what you do, you need to see spinologists regularly. And frankly, we need a hell of a lot more spinologists here in Ireland than we have at the moment. So if you know somebody who should be a spinologist, just spread, spread the word. You have a husband or a wife, or a son or a daughter, send them here to get information on signing up to become a spinologist. It's only a two year program, part time. And during that part time, you learn enough skills to serve humanity for the rest of your life. All these little kiddies running around with obtrusions now, need to be told, their parents need to be told. I would like you to do something for me. I, I can't talk to all the people, I don't know them all, but you know your neighbors. Talk to them, tell them what you learned about spinology today. Tell them the advan advantages of having the spine checked by an expert. And for the rest of you, how about becoming an expert? The tutorial is available. I don't know when classes start. They'll tell you that. But you need lo lots. We need lots more spinologists around the world, and in Ireland, and everywhere. And for the chiropractors, how would you like instead of waiting for somebody to get sick before they check the spine, they come in and say, "Oh, my back hurts." I don't want that bloody back ache, darling. I like. Love to see the whole family come in. Mom, Dad, and all the kids come in and get the spine checked, adjusted when necessary, and then go home, knowing that their body is better for the adjustment than it possibly could have been without it. Now, any more questions? I'm just wondering how, how would you explain a spinal fusion um, or anything that actually reduces the IVF space and how these people continue to function? If, for instance, someone with clip file syndrome. Well, they don't function 100%. That's the problem. They don't function 100%. They do 100% of what they can do, but they can't do as much with that as they could have without it. And by the time they but, have but that... something like that, if, if the IVF is more or less cut off completely, how could they continue to function? If you're saying the slightest amount of pressure on the, on the nerve root will, ha will be detrimental to their health, right. surely somebody who's cut it off almost completely will have a huge impact on their health. It does. I agree, yeah. Yeah, it does have a huge impact. But don't function only on the damage to health. If you're limited in your body's expression, it goes far beyond health. I mean, bad health is bad enough, but a bad life is terrible. 
if you have an obtrusion, you're a bad driver. You're no good at crossword puzzles. It interferes with your family relationships, with your sex life. With everything in life depends on a good, healthy nerve system. And if the nerve system is damaged, you are less than you could be. Now, the fellow with the triple file syndrome is doing the best he can under the circumstances. But that's because the damage is already done and permanent. Do you know if they have a reduced lifestyle? I looked it up, but I haven't been able to find any data. I don't know. I haven't done any search on that. It, I very well might be a reduced lifespan. See, when somebody dies, you never know how long they would have lived if they didn't have an approval. That's the trouble. The trouble with research is it's never perfect. Good question, though. Any other question? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, there'll be a pop quiz in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, they're all yours. Thank you. Amazing. Um, I've heard a version of that speech, and I actually had the cassettes of that similar speech. And every time I hear it, every time the concept is put forward, to me it's just amazing that this hasn't caught on around the world, around the planet like wildfire. A lot of my own personal clients, when we first start, they hear the same information in the initial orientation. But it's, it's fairly overwhelming to hear all this information so quickly. So we continue to reinforce it and reinforce it and reinforce it. And every now and then, because I do get very excited about talking about spinology, they say, so you think that spinology is the be-all to end-all? No, spinology is a starting point for all. Whatever else you're going to do, well, should I get some physio done on this? If you want to. Do you think it'll help? It may. Should I, should I get organic food? If you want to. But if you buy organic food, or you're getting physio done, and you're choosing exercises to do, and you have these spinal occlusions in your body, you're not going to get the best out of that. You may be putting some of the best organic food into the manhole as opposed to into the body. So spinology absolutely positively is not a be-all to end-all. It's a starting point for everything. And when you, when you see people, and we all know people, I am one of those people, never got my spine checked for the very first time until I was in my late teens, and it was because I had a terrible sciatica. And then it wasn't until I was in my, well, like Reggie, in my early 30s, early to mid 30s, that this concept of maintenance hit me. And then honestly, I felt kind of stupid because it didn't dawn on me before. And doing this for a living, Day in, day out, the only frustrating aspect that you ever face as a spinologist in a practice, besides trying to get the face paper down on the table and getting it to stay there properly, <laughs> the only other frustrating thing that you do is beat your head against the wall going, why doesn't everybody understand this? It's so simple. They brush their teeth, don't they? They understand maintenance there. They never ask, how long do I have to brush my teeth? Well, you brush them as long as you want your teeth to be clean. When you no longer want your te teeth to be clean and healthy, then you stop brushing your teeth. How long do I have to see a spinologist? As long as you want your life as good as it possibly can be. That's the answer. So we have unique fee systems. Another big difference between what we do and what other professions do is we give the opportunity for you to choose how often you'd like to come in. How often should I come in? How often do you want to come in? How often would you go to a gym? Well, geez, that gets expensive, doesn't it? <laughs> it doesn't get expensive to utilize a spinology fee system. The spinology fee system has you pay for three months, six months, or a year in advance, no exceptions. If you're charging per visit, it would be 